Okay, so here I am with my next video on intractable pain and um, the CDC guidelines and and how horrible this whole thing is for people with intractable pain like myself. Um, I've got my heating pad on, I'm propped up and I'm ready to go. I kind of prettified with my UCAM so that we have a little bit of sunshine in this video. So um, I have been doing as much research as I possibly can. It's been really rough. Um, it's very hard to do things when you're in a lot of pain all the time. So uh, I found some information though that I thought we should all be aware of. So now, um, as you all know, there's a lot of people out there who are now suffering. They have intractable pain, and I'm going to keep using the, the term intractable pain because it is different than chronic pain, even though the CDC refuses to put intractable pain in their vocabulary. It is different than chronic pain. It's more severe, and it's going to last for the rest of our lives. And, um, and it's horrible. So I'm going to use the term intractable pain because it's real. There is a definition for it. It's more severe. And uh, we need help. So I've done some studying and I found some things out. And so I'm going to let you know uh, what the deal is here. So I found out that during the time that the CDC was making these new guidelines, they were being very secretive, okay? Now, I found out that, uh, you know, how they do their studies and how they get these guidelines made is they, they uh, get a group of people, stakeholders, peers, etc., stakeholders, you know, um, and whatnot, and they, and they do their little studies or what have you, and they, they design and make up these types of guidelines and these types of things that is supposed to be in the best interest of the public. However, these new guidelines on opioid prescribing were done in a manner that was, um, I would say, kind of illegal. Uh, I believe that what they did was wrong and they should have been a little more uh, clear about it. They should have put in a little more uh, clarity for the doctors and for the states who are doing their, their state guidelines to include people with intractable pain so that um, we are not suffering from this new guideline. But the point is here, what they did was a, a secret type of a panel to get this guideline going. They handpicked particular people, which I think is completely illegal. Um, they did not have anybody who specializes in um, pain or severe pain or chronic pain or intractable pain or anything to the like. They had one person on their little panel, hand-picked, mind you, by the CDC, her name was Dr. Ballantine. Ballantine, Ballantine, I don't know how you would pronounce it. She was the only one included in this panel to make these guidelines. And she is actually a, a pain management expert, apparently. However, what no one really knows is Dr. Ballantine. She serves as president for the Physicians for Responsible Opioid Prescribing, or PROP. And among other activities, she petitioned the FDA to curb opiate use and lobby Congress for legislative limits on opioid prescribing, of course. But in addition to her pre-existing ideology bias, she actually suffers from a financial conflict of interest. 
having acted as a paid consultant to a law firm representing the state of California and the city of Chicago in novel lawsuits against opioid manufacturers, clients who stand to gain from a strict federal guideline. Right there is a very serious conflict of interest. So the CDC handpicked this supposed specialist who had a severe bias against opioid prescribing to begin with, who also had a lot to lose should these guidelines not be more strict because she served as a specialist, a witness in these two cases against opioid manufacturers. That's a conflict of interest. They should not have used her in making this decision on these guidelines. Now, there are much better experts out there, like Dr. Forrest Tennant or Dr. Webster, who know a lot more about severe pain patients and, and you know, minor pain patients, chronic pain patients, but also they know about intractable pain patients who do not have any other means of relief other than the opioid prescribing. Now, I have personally been fighting my own battle here in the state of New Mexico, and um, I am kind of getting somewhere. It's been a really rough ride, and I, I have to be patient. Well, they, they don't understand that patience is very hard when you're suffering so bad for so many years that, you know, they think, yeah, they have to go through all the logistics and the red tape and whatnot, but a person who is suffering on a constant 24 hours a day, seven days a week basis, patience is not easy, but I'm trying to be patient with them, and I'm getting somewhere. Now, I'm fighting my own battle with my prescriptions, per se, but I'm also fighting for all the other pain patients that I have been speaking to who are at their wits end, they don't know what to do. Their doctors are lowering their pain medications all the time. Every time they go in, they're reducing their pain medications. And and result of that is these people, these American people with families are getting worse and worse. Their conditions are causing them with this reduction to not be able to go to their children's events at school, not go see them play soccer or not be able to go shopping or not be able to do any family functions anymore because their medications have been reduced due to this guideline. Now the doctors, what they say is, we're not going to lose our license over anybody. So. This is how it has to be. They don't care how bad you are. They're not going to lose their license. This is their career. And when you put these, these guidelines and impose these laws on them, they're just going to not deal with it. They have all these patients, and then they have these patients with very severe conditions. They're not going to take these patients with very severe conditions and keep them up on a medication level that they need and require to live their everyday life if it's going to cost them their license, which they are in fear of. But nobody makes it clear to them that they're not going to lose their license if they're prescribing this for a legitimate reason. The communication in the medical world is absolutely atrocious. The, the system's messed up, people, and people are suffering because of it. Now, we have a problem here because opiates are, are something that help people who have severe intractable pain and have no cure for their pain function and live an everyday life like anyone else, like you people do, okay? We, when we don't have them, can't get out of bed. We want to die. It is better to die than to be in that kind of pain, which is a horrible thing. It is causing more suicides. 
suicide rates have risen just between 99 and 2014. Suicide rates have risen 24% for the, the mere fact of being in pain. And now it's going to rise even more. In 2014, nearly 43,000 Americans committed suicide. Okay? And it's all linked to being in pain. That is like twice the number of, of overdose deaths in that year, okay? Twice the number. So that's a problem. Also, you need to understand that there's a serious problem with keeping somebody in pain. Now, I know the CDC says that their concern is the overdose epidemic. Now, they lied to everyone about this in the beginning, saying that that this was going through uh, all people who were being prescribed opioid medications, that everybody was, you know, going overboard and whatnot and overdosing, which is not really the case, and they know it. These are the people who are overdosing or what have you are the drug addicts who are getting it from the street sellers and whatnot, and they admit that now. Uh, it isn't necessarily legitimately prescribed patients that are the overdosing patients. I know personally, I have been prescribed opioid medication since the drunk driver crashed into me and tore my body apart, breaking bones, splitting pelvic in half, tearing my leg to shreds, crushing my hand, etc. I went through an almost death, near death experience. There was a very little chance of survival for me and I overcame it. And I've been on opioid medication for 31 years as of July 23rd of 2017. Never have I once overdosed, come close to an overdose or anything to that effect in all these years of being prescribed medication. I have never overdosed once. And there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of people just like me who go to their doctors, who get prescriptions for their pain, who were fine until these guidelines started reducing their pain medications on them. They never overdosed. They, they didn't have a problem with all of that. They were just finally out of pain. So, we have, you know, a little problem here. Now, ow, I wanted to go over some things because they worry about overdosing and whatnot. However, there's been studies, okay, that severe pain, independent of medical therapy, may cause sudden unexpected death. Cardiac arrest is the cause, okay? And so you need to know that a chronic pain patient or an intractable pain patient, it can be very terminal condition. It stresses the body to be in pain constantly, which causes your blood pressure to rise, which causes stress to your heart, emotional stress, physical stress, and could lead to heart attack and then death. Therefore, weigh out the two here. Is it more important to, to get a person down on the opiates and let them suffer and possibly die of a heart attack or to be under a doctor's care and get the appropriate amount of medication that is going to get them down to a level of pain that they can handle and function in life with? And most likely they're not going to overdose because they're under a doctor's care and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So we have to weigh this out here. You people who are making these guidelines and you doctors who are scared to death of the guidelines and who are cutting people down are putting patients at risk of heart attack and death due to the stress of the pain 
and you have no cure for a lot of us. Most of us, like myself, there's no cure. I'm going to be in this condition for the rest of my life. Therefore, I'm going to need opioid pain medication for the rest of my life. And yeah, there's all these opioid or non-opioid choices. I have tried many of them. And I have had horrible side effects from a lot of them. One, I thought I was having a heart attack and dying. I think it was Lyrica. I've tried, uh, Celebrex was one of them as well. I've had horrible side effects from these other medications. You're trying to get, get us away from opioids, yet you're giving us these crazy medications that are supposed to help work, and they're giving us terrible side effects. Pain, stomach pains, diarrhea, uh, in, in, internal bleeding, uh, headaches, dizzy spells, racing heart, all kinds of horrible side effects. Just to get us away from opiates, that's ridiculous. When we know for a fact that the opiates worked before and everything was fine, there were no problems. So you're really harming patients with what you're doing here. So sudden unexpected death with the pain is, is a serious problem, okay? So we have another issue, though. We need the CDC to recognize intractable pain. It is more severe than chronic pain, and it needs to be put out there. It needs to be defined. It needs to be put in the guidelines as an exception because... Unfortunately, palliative care is no longer palliative care. Palliative care and hospice are so equivalent almost now in their definition and the understanding of it that you literally cannot get on palliative care or palliative care in your, you know, in, well, I personally can't get it in my area at all. My doctors and my medical facility is working on that. But other patients can't get it uh, unless they're like basically hospice. Uh, hosp you know, they have to be in a condition where they're, it's almost like hospice. They have failed to differentiate the, the difference between hospice and palliative care now. So palliative care needs to be redefined. And uh, you do exclude palliative care in your guidelines CDC, I'm talking to you, but palliative care has been now kind of reduced into a level of hospice, into a level where patients like me can't get on it or can't get palliative care because we are not like dying right now. But palliative care was not meant for people who were dying right now. Palliative care was meant for people who have conditions that are incurable and they're in severe pain and uncomfortable to give them a quality of life until they die. Now, that's what I should be under, but I can't get under palliative care in my state, which my state failed to recognize before they followed your guidelines, CDC, they, for, they failed to recognize that some people, being that we're in a state where there's a lot of rural areas and uh, we're, you know, we're in a state where there's a lot of Native American reservation lands and places that, that these doctors won't go. I happen to live in a very rural area and these palliative care doctors do not come to, out to this place. As it is, my caregiver has to give me a ride to my doctor's appointments, it's an hour drive just to get to the doctor for me. I should not be having to suffer like this. Now, um, we have to redefine palliative care and get these patients who have intractable pain on palliative care. That's another issue. We also need to make some changes. We need an IPD code for intractable pain. Something the doctors can put in their records that shows that, hey, this particular patient is in a way more severe condition than your common everyday pain patient. 
we've got to give tools to these doctors. We need change around here. There's a serious problem. We have been overlooked. And it's wrong. We've been overlooked. So, we've got to figure this out. We've got to make changes, people. Um, persistent pain can cause death. Overdosing the epidemic is not with patients like us. We're seeking pain relief because it is horrible to be in a condition where you're in such severe pain that breathing is hard, that you can't even get up and go to the bathroom, that you have to talk yourself into getting up to go to the restroom because you know it's going to cause you so much pain. It's torturous. It should be illegal. In fact, I think under human rights, it is illegal. And you've put us on the wayside. You, you've put us kind of behind the scene here before you made all these guidelines. And our well-being is now at risk because opioids are not the enemy. People who abuse opioids are the enemy. And you're not going to stop them by making these doctors fear for their licenses and cutting people like us down on our medications. This is not going to stop an overdose epidemic. In fact, patients are still going to come in and die. Patients are going to die from this sudden unexpected death and heart attacks. And you're just going to chalk it up to a heart attack. But you're not going to put two and two together and see that, hey, this person was in severe pain and it caused them to have a heart attack. You people are supposed to be smart, physicians, trained. You're supposed to know what you're doing, yet you're failing so many people. The medical field has turned into such a circus. Nobody knows what the other person's doing. Nobody communicates. You go by these guidelines and rules only. You do not individualize patients anymore. You see so many patients all the time. You just run us through. We're no longer an individual person, and it's pathetic. Each person should have individual care. Each intractable pain patient should be evaluated for the level of pain that they are in and properly treated. And usually it's going to be a lot higher dosage than your average everyday person, especially if they've been on opioid pain medications for a number of years, like myself, 31 years of taking opioids. Yes, I have grown a tolerance, so I need higher dosages. I can handle that higher dosage because my body so used to having these opioid medications that it takes a higher dosage to take my pain away. We know that. The studies show that. That's just a fact. I'm not dead. I haven't had a close call of death in 31 years. I don't plan on having a close call because I'm not going to take more than what I need to get out of pain. Now, right now, I'm on my medication and it's slowly starting to wear off. Um, it only lasts about five hours. It's supposed to last 12. It does not. I need about twice the dosage as what I'm taking now. I was on it before, never overdosed. And that's what we're working towards getting me back on. Now, I might be able to fix my problem because I'm fighting for it. But there are numerous other people who cry to me, who write me emails who tell me their stories of going to the doctors and the doctors are reducing their pain medications knowing full well that these patients need them they have incurable conditions that cause severe pain but you know what they're saying we're not going to lose our license i'm sorry that is not medical care that is not right and the state boards, the medical boards for the states, all you're doing is following the leader, the CDC, who has lied to you, who put out these guidelines under bias, conflict of interest, 
conditions here. And, and all of this should be illegal. Now, until there's change made, change that it accepts intractable pain patients as human beings who need to be treated, who accepts the fact that opioids are not the enemy, they are a legitimate way of treating people with intractable pain or severe pain. They are a legitimate way to help people have a quality of life who otherwise would be bed bound and miserable and would probably die of a heart attack eventually from the pain being so severe. These people who are overdosing, now th that's another thing I want to bring up really quick. A lot of the statistics are totally incorrect. Now, there are pain patients who take high dosages of pain medication, a little higher than the normal, but they're still in severe pain. Now, they could have a pain surge, go into the emergency room, die of a heart attack, their heart stops or whatever, and because they have a high level of opioids in them, they immediately just assume that it was an overdose, even though they had already been taking those medications in the past for years probably, but they just call it an overdose. Now, if a person's been on that medication for a year and has an overdose and then suddenly dies of a heart attack, common sense says it wasn't an overdose. They died of probably pain surge, stress from the pain. They had a heart attack because they were in so much pain and they couldn't take it anymore. Their body can't, your body can't take that much pain. It's very stressful, but they don't determine that. So your statistics on overdosing are absolutely incorrect anyway, because nobody actually looks into all the facts. Nobody looks in to see if these patients actually were on this medication for a long period of time. So that's important to look at too. But my main thing this time is the fact that this guideline and this attack on opiates has, has been falsely presented to the people. Now, people like President Donald Trump and congressmen and senators, they are going by what is brought before them by people like the CDC and their affiliates and their different departments, uh, the, the injury you know, prevention, they're going by that. And if that was brought to them under false pretenses, they're being lied to. Yes, that's right. You guys are being lied to to get these bills passed. I would think twice before you just absolutely believe what they're saying. They... Did, they, they brought in a, a very biased conflict of interest, actually, is the words that should be used. They brought in a very biased person who was supposed to be their specialist, and it should have been illegal. They should have brought someone else in, like Dr. Forrest Tennant, to really give them the information on severe intractable pain or chronic pain, because he is the specialist the number one specialist in the nation, actually, who they should be listening to. But when physicians like that and specialists like that try to get something across to the CDC, they are ignored. I talk to these people, these physicians, these doctors. The ones who know are being ignored. They handpick people who are going to fulfill their agenda. And this is wrong. Now, there are still going to be many deaths, and there's probably going to be more deaths. The more that you reduce people who need these medications, you reduce their dosage, the more likely they are going to die of a heart attack from a pain surge or something like that, or commit suicide. And that's on you. That's your fault, CDC, because you did not make sure that there are exceptions for people with more severe conditions. You assume that the states will make laws, that, that the doctors will make decisions because they know better. 
But the fact is, everybody's scared of you. Everybody's scared of the FDA. Everybody's scared of the DEA. Everybody's afraid because the SHIT runs downhill. They're afraid of losing their licenses, so they are going to just cut everybody off. And that trend is horrible. So what you're doing now is you're forcing people with severe cases to suffer because of fear. Now we're going to have a serious problem on our hands. We're going to have a whole lot of people dying because they're committing suicide or their, their heart goes out because the pain is so severe. It's just a horrible, horrible epidemic going around here that has got to stop. We've got to do something about it. And you should be held accountable. The, center, the, the Centers for Disease Control, you need to be held accountable for your biased choosing of your panel to make these guidelines. That is absolutely, should be illegal. And I'm calling you out right now. Explain yourself. Why did you choose a one specialist in your little secret panel to make these guidelines? One specialist who just so happened to be testifying for two different places, two states, that are prosecuting opioid manufacturing companies and you testified against them and you actually uh, uh, you you took this person who was biased completely lobbying the the legislative the legislature and, and others to stop prescribing opioids to people and you chose that particular person only to be your specialist instead of going to people who deal with these people every day like Dr. Forrest Tennant. You choose to ignore him. He's written you many times. I know you know his name. I talk to him. He has petitioned you many a times to listen to him and you don't. There are serious conditions out here that need help and the only help that we can get is the opioid medication you have no cure for us you cannot help us there is no medical procedure that will help us the only thing that keeps us going is the opioid medications and it's a legitimate practice and you have made it to where every doctor is so afraid that it no longer is legitimate practice and everybody passed the buck to another person so I'm calling you out here. Let's make some changes, some exceptions. Put intractable pain in your guideline. Make exceptions. Make it more clear to the doctors that, yes, there are more severe cases and you know that they're going to need higher doses of the medications and that's okay. Make it clear to them because all they see are these numbers, Got to get them down to this level, and that goes for everybody, no matter how severe it is. Let's see. I'm calling you out right now. Make this change. Make this happen. And God, please, my president, Donald Trump, do not just listen to what they're throwing in front of you. Do your own investigation. They have done this illegally and wrong. And they are making people who have severe conditions suffer needlessly. Even our veterans are suffering from these opioid guideline changes. It's not right to make people suffer. And especially our soldiers, our men and women who've gone to other countries, been blown to bits, are in severe pain. They come home in severe pain and we have made it so they have to suffer more. They have to suffer more. It's horrible. People like me, I'm a victim twice now. I'm a victim of a drunk driver, and I'm a victim of the system now. And I shouldn't have to fight so hard 
to just live an everyday life like anyone else and be able to function. It's not right. So stand up and do something about it. And I'm not going to stop until it's done for all intractable pain patients. For all of those you have no cure for who are suffering in pain. I will not stop. No, I won't. You will be hearing more from me. So let's make a law. Let's change the law a little bit. I get you don't want people to be overdosing. These people are going to get it anyway. They're drug addicts on the street. Not legitimate pain patients. Let's, let's stop this attack on legitimate opioid prescribing. And let's find another way to stop these illegal people. Don't make us suffer anymore. Put a stop to it. I am going to keep fighting until this is done. We should not be suffering. We should not have to spend our lives in severe agony. We are people too. That's all I got to say. I can't say anymore. I'm going to keep fighting. Just know that. I'm not going anywhere. At least not yet, I hope. I don't think that it's right what you're doing. And I'm done. Make the change. Because I'm going to start something. I'm going to make it so everyone knows what you've done. You need to do a new study with the right people. Dr. Webster, Dr. Forrest Tennant, people who really know. Go to Pain News Network. Read the stories on the painnewsnetwork.org. Read the stories of these people who are suffering. People who have committed suicide because the pain was so bad they thought their families would be better off and they couldn't take the pain anymore. It's wrong. You're not stopping anything for these people. You're not doing any good. I'm done. I can't anymore. My pain's starting to come back. I don't feel good. This is it. This is my new video. I will be back. I'm very upset right now. I've been looking many things up and I'm finding out how really undermined and illegal the things that they're doing are. Everybody, you need to look up, you pain patients out there who are listening, you need to look up the CDC, the stakeholders, uh, the Forbes article from 2015. You need to look up and see all the things that really came to pass to make this stuff go on and happen. And you need to fight for your right to be out of torturous pain. It's the only way this is going to work. We need to be one big voice. We need to be heard. So let's do that. Let's get together and be heard. It's the only way this is going to stop. Thank you. I know I got a little upset. I'm starting to get in some pretty bad pain right now. The stress is coming on and I got to go. So this is my new video on intractable pain. And I'm frustrated, yes. And I'm angry, yes. Because we're suffering. And um, those drug addicts, they're not. They're still getting it. You're not stopping anything, CDC. So let's make some changes so that we don't suffer anymore. That's it. Lynette, signing out. Bye, people.